This is Granddaddy Speaks, and this is Andy Barely. We're going to talk about a poem that children learn, and it has implications that would surprise people if they really knew where it came from and what the origin was. Some long time ago, in England, Queen Elizabeth I was getting old and ill and not doing well and the Parliament got very nervous because she didn't have somebody close by to inherit the throne. And her sister, not her sister, her relative, not sister at all, relative, her relative Mary Queen of Scots had gotten in trouble with her parliament and made some difficulties up there and had asked her relative Queen Elizabeth I if she could come down to England and Queen Elizabeth I had graciously given her a castle, a castle and a lot of workers to help her so she could be comfortable and happy and she brought a bunch of ladies and some knights so she had a court and she ruled as a, a, a queen that was in exile from Scotland. Well, when the queen, Elizabeth I, got so ill, the parliament was worried about that because they didn't want that queen, uh, the former queen of Scotland, because she had been up to mischief and had maybe blown up a couple of places or had them blown up and gotten into scandals. So they sent, secretly, without notifying Elizabeth, they sent people up to uh, the north of England with a, uh, a headsman and cut off her head. And that left only her son. And her son was a prince, and he had been raised by the parliament in Scotland, basically, to be a very good boy and, and everything about him seemed to be good. And so the English decided because he was the closest kin to Elizabeth when she died, they would bring him down and they did. She died and they brought him down and made him the king. And he turned into a king that liked his lords and his ladies and he liked all of the wealth and things of England, but he didn't care a whole lot about the protocol, the rules and things that the English liked to go by. And the English army had become an army made up of people that were basically Puritans. And they wanted the churches to take out the colored windows, and they wanted the preachers and priests to become wear black clothes, and they, they wanted to change the way England was. And so the king and his group were against that, and the army and the king, and a lot of the common people joined the army, and there, there was a civil war in England, and it was called the war between the Cavaliers and the Roundheads, because all of the men in the army and the civilians that were helping the army had their hair cut short just about like mine and all of the people that were the nobles had long hair and were all dressed up and pretty and everything and had horses and lances and swords and everything so they got to be this big war and actually both armies were about as good as each other but the soldiers did better at figuring out how to do a battle. And they got the king cornered in a castle. And he would be seen walking up and down the wall and looking off the wall at the people down there below him. And finally, when they captured the castle, they took the king and had a court that was just a fake court and they sentenced him to death and cut his head off. And in the newspapers, the paper 
newspaper owners couldn't dare say anything bad about either side because they would get assassinated, but they put in something that the people could figure out for themselves when they went to the pubs and talked among themselves without the big shots there. And the thing was, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. And that poem was in an English newspaper telling about the king having had his head chopped off and you can't put that together again. And that's a true story of how Humpty Dumpty came. So many of the poems that we know in our childhood books that we study, uh, read when we're just little girls and boys, so many of those were in English newspapers secretly sort of telling the news so that the guy that wrote the, the thing couldn't be hauled into court and say, oh, you're bothering the lords and ladies or the rulers and we're going to cut your head off too. And so those poems, a lot of them have a secret meaning and that's the secret meaning of Humpty Dumpty. Have a good evening.